So I became a manager with, without knowing what I'm doing. You know, there's just this, this t-shirt of, I'm an engineering manager riding a bike, the bike is on fire, I have no idea what I'm doing, that, that was me. Hey, this is Gary with The Pragmatic Engineer, and this is part one on a three-part series of developing engineers into leaders. In this part, I'm gonna talk about how I got into engineering management, which is kind of accidental. This talk was recorded on CTO Craft Conference. If you're an engineering leader or a CTO, check out their website, and at the very least, consider signing up for their newsletter that I'm also part of and I really enjoy. Every team member we have actively develops their technical skills, often through blogs or attending events, and of course, in their day-to-day -day work. But what if you've got a natural leader on your team? How do you foster them? To explore this for us, we have Azechi Britton, Principal and CTO in Residence at ImpactX, talking to Gergé Oros, an author and mentor and former engineering manager at Uber on developing engineers into leaders. Welcome everyone to this fireside chat with Gerge Oros, where we're going to discuss how to give engineers a path to leadership. I'm going to hand straight over to Gerge to give a quick introduction to himself. Gerge. Yep. So, so I'm, I'm Gerge. As you can tell from my name, I'm, I'm not from the UK, although I lived there for quite a while. I'm originally from Hungary and my career spanned from starting to work at small local companies after graduating university. I lived quite a bit in the UK, uh, two years in Edinburgh, five years in London, where I, I worked at an Edinburgh financial consultancies in London. I worked at JP Morgan, then, then at Skype, Skyscanner at, at Uber, high growth companies the past couple of years, where I, I went from um, engineer all, all the way to, to manager of managers. So look, Gogo, you, you've been an engineer. I've been an engineer. For those of you who don't know, I was a developer for over 10 years and a CTO for five. And now I work in the venture capital space. Um, so you and I have both come across many interesting individuals in that space. So we've got a good chunk of time now. So how about you give me some information about your route into leadership? and your journey. You've worked for some fascinating companies, all brands everyone's familiar with. So talk to us a bit about your journey, Gergo. My journey is when you look at it and when you look at my LinkedIn, it does paint a very you know, nice picture. And looking back, well, yeah, it, it looks nice, but in some ways it is a typical journey for software engineers. And I'm not talking about the companies, I'm talking about my progression of, of where I went and I'll, I'll go a little bit, but but in, in just a short overview, I went from being an engineer to a bit of a tech lead, that gray area, which is between manager and 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 and, and, and engineer and lead. I went to become a manager and then in the end, I was a manager of managers. So that's the short of it. But behind the scenes, there's, there's a lot more to it. So, one of the things that perhaps I benefited from, I changed companies frequently, not because I wanted to, but because of opportunities. I spent a few years at a small company, um, a local company where I, I just learned the the, the basics of, of the trade, then moved to the UK where I, I, I was more of a junior engineer at this company. But my biggest leadership growth happened when I moved up, uh, moved up to London and specifically when I joined Skype. Uh, I was lucky to join Skype at the time. I like to say Skype. It was Microsoft, right? When Microsoft bought Skype, but Microsoft had this a new internal rule that they're going to leave companies that they buy alone for eighteen months because they just got burned. This was the old Microsoft, see Balmer's Microsoft. They got burned by double click and and that acquisition blowing up. So for eighteen months, it was just Skype, and. At Skype, the really interesting thing was Skype did this massive experiment to turn everyone onto Scrum. We we got the best training from one of the founders of the Agile Manifest, so I forgot what his name was. The whole company went there, and we all became we all went to form Scrum teams, and and we have Scrum masters, uh, and and we we rotated that role. And I was really really keen to be a Scrum master just because I thought it's fascinating to do something like that. And that was my first taste of leadership. Now this this didn't can't come from me doing it this was more like who wants to be a scrum master and i said sure i'll be and turns out a lot of engineers around me didn't want to be scrum masters and i didn't understand why and after a while we went around and everyone was a scrum master and most people said i don't want to be a scrum master again it was too distracting i didn't like doing it but i i i kept at it uh and and i also started to observe one of the things i really like being a scrum master uh is how I, initially i thought this would be this would just not work like it, it seemed a lot of it seemed new, but it seemed there's all these rules, the rituals, the, the retrospectives. It's a lot of work. But after a few weeks, I saw the team working better. And I was like, huh, 
That's interesting. All I do is just follow honestly some silly rules. If if you know classics from, I, it's it's silly in 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 the things we we followed it to the T. We had the rituals. We had coaches there telling us to do this or that, and and we had to use cars to do estimations. But it was really interesting how team got better just by following some arbitrary rules that someone came up with. And that was a point where I started to think, you know what? I kind of enjoy helping teams get better. Now, I was really. Well, I was really, I felt very junior. I was in a team of about 20 engineers. 10 of them were more senior than me in terms of years of experience. I was a mid-level engineer, not even a senior at Microsoft. So I kind of, you know, knew my place. But one thing I started to do was I started to observe my managers. I started to see, hmm, what are they doing? On our one-on-ones, I paid a bit more attention. Uh, I, I, I started to just take a list of the things I didn't like that my managers were doing. And, and we'll, we'll probably get back to that later. And then... Uh, after a few years at Microsoft, I, I wasn't seeing career progression, mostly because I, I blamed it at the time of my manager. But I had, I had a manager who didn't promote me, despite me never asking. But I I, uh. I really, and I, I changed teams to another team, which which had a good reputation for being a great team, which the manager there was a micromanager, which, again, was good. But I also didn't get promoted there. Uh, so in the end, uh, when Performance Review came after two years at Microsoft, no promotions, and I was kind of huffing and puffing. Uh, promotions always come and and annual raises at Microsoft in in August. Uh, by September, I was I decided I'm going to go somewhere else, and I joined uh, a startup, uh, more of a startup. That's back in the day, Skyscanner. A lot of you, of course, uh, would, would would know this. And I was really lucky never to join. Never heard of it. Go, go. Never heard of it. <laughs> never heard of it. <laughs> I, was one of, I was one of the first people in London, actually. But I, I joined uh, one of their acquisitions. Uh, they acquired a tiny startup, and I was uh, with two founders, and I was the first engineer there. And completely accidentally, I was put in a position where I was asked to hire my team to build a mobile team. I was building the mobile app, and they told me hire people. And I said, how? They said, here's your opportunity, Gergay. Figure it out. So I became a manager with without knowing what I'm doing. You know, there's just this, this T-shirt of I'm an engineering manager riding a bike. The bike is on fire. I have no idea what I'm doing. That, that was me. So I just I, I looked up uh, engine blogs, et cetera, uh, on, on what to do things. I hired people, had one-on-ones with them. I think I did okay, but I, I, I in hindsight, I did the, the usual rookie mistakes. And then the interesting next step in my career was I decided to to leave London uh, for, for different reasons. And I got this really good opportunity for from Uber. Uh, and I was already pretty much a manager or a tech lead, whatever you want to call it. My title was principal engineering lead. And they offered me a senior engineering role. And this Uber was really hyped back then. It was probably the best place you could go. It was like like Slack today when we know it was getting acquired and, and so, 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 so some of these things. I asked if I could join as a, as a tech lead, but they said, no, you can only join as a senior engineer. So I went in as a senior engineer. I was like, it's, it's Uber. And my previous skills <laughs> were pretty valuable. There weren't, there weren't too many experienced people around. No one has really been a tech lead before. So I, I found myself becoming manager very quickly. Uh, I saw a gap there. Uh, my manager had too many reports. And I told him, look, uh, I actually want to be a manager if there's an opportunity. Can we make it happen? And, and we did. And at Uber, there was the strict rule of having an apprentice management program. Uh, so you had to go through training because Uber realized, of course, uh, this was around 2017. A lot of you have heard the bad press, but Uber realized that a lot of their managers were brand new. They wanted to get training. So I kind of get, get, got a double training. That apprentice program was really good. I got some really good training. Uh, I had the opportunity to ask questions. People knew I was junior. And I also got very strong mentors at Uber. One of my mentors is a reporter CTO. She's now COO at DoorDash. So I had some fantastic mentors right. to learn from. And that, that is my leadership story in a nutshell. It's both typical, but not typical. I was lucky that I got opportunities to move into management, but I also realized early on that it's something at some point I might want to do, not really management, but more helping people get better. So that's a fascinating story, Gogay, and I love the, the progression that you experienced and the, the level of serendipity there as well. That's it for part one of the series. In part two, I'm going to talk about my approach on how to help engineers grow into leaders and engineering managers. Since leaving Uber, I'm doing a lot of reflection and a lot of writing. One of the books that I'm writing is Building Mobile Apps at Scale, is the experience of both myself and a bunch of other people in the industry about the challenges of building large mobile apps, teams that are built by large teams or that are just massive, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lines of code. You can grab this book for free. Or if you decide to pay, you get additional content like my learnings at Uber or my advice to mobile engineers who would like to grow to senior and above levels. If you're enjoying this, please hit like and subscribe. See you in the next part of the series.